Hello everyone. Welcome back to this Postman tutorial. In our previous tutorial, we learned how to create a record using a POST request in the Postman tool. In today's lecture, we are going to learn how to use a Postman POST request in order to create multiple records. There are two ways by using which we can create multiple records. The first way is for each record we can create a separate POST request in the Postman tool which is more cumbersome and it will be more challenging to maintain over the period of time. The second option is using the script. It's called a pre-request script and test section. So using those two sections we can achieve of handing multiple records for the post request. So let's go ahead and create our first post request. In order to create post request, either we can click this plus icon which I just clicked or you can go to the new and create a request. Whatever the best way suits for you, you can use that. Then as it is a POST request, we have to select the HTTP method as a POST. Then we'll give the URL name. The URL name for which we are going to send a POST request. In the real-time project, you will get this URL from the web service provider. As I already aware about the URL, I already configured that as an environment variable. And the name is URL. It is in uppercase, so I will use that. And then system name as an admin, which we have already seen in our previous lecture. Now the next thing is configuring the body section, because the body is the section where from which the data will be sent to the request. In today's lecture, we are going to use the JSON format. So from this none section, we'll select just raw. And from the, the other drop down, we'll select the JSON. Let's prepare a sample request. It will start with the open curly bracket. This particular web service, which I'm going to call for posting a data, requires mandatory attribute called as a key. This kind of attribute details you can get from your provider team, which are actually going to develop. Uh, the web service and they will provide the endpoint and what are the attributes then we need to pass in order to create a record. So this is a key, it's a mandatory attribute for this web service, so I will pass that and it also requires a, a sub attribute called as a source key. If I do not pass these values then record will not be created. Then what I will do, um, I have created another environment variable it's called as a cust ID. So I will pass that here so that the, the runtime value will change. And in order to pass the, the environment variable value, you have to use op two open curly bracket and two close curly brackets. And then we'll pass the attribute as a cust ID because that is the variable name I have created. So this is my very first element. At the end of the first element, I'll just use comma and my the second attribute. Second attribute, let's use a uh, full name. You can use other attribute based on your web consumer, uh, based on your provider's web service detail. And I will pass here value such as like John Doe. And in order to distinguish the record, I will just prefix this name with the cust ID. It is just for our understanding purpose, we don't have to always pass these values for the first name or any other attribute. So this way, my body section is ready. Of course, you can create a complex body section if that is your requirement in your real-time project. Once we are done with the configuration of the body section, the next section we have to handle is a pre-request. So in the pre-request, what we have to do is we have to get the all the attributes which will be used in our request. So as of that, um, I'm going to use the cust ID which is I just mentioned here. 
So this cost ID we have to store somewhere, right? So that we can store in our local variable. So how can we do that? How to create a local variable? So first step will be creating local variable, I would say. Then once we create, we have to initialize that because from here the values will be get initialized and will be get used in the actual body of the request. Initialize local variable and then we have to set that local variable value in our environment variable. Right now the environment variable is available but no value is assigned. There is no current value, there is no initialized value. So we have to set the environment variables. So these are the three steps we have to perform. Now let's create our first variable. The variable creation is very simple process as we are going to store multiple customer IDs I'll just name the variable as a cust IDs because it will going to hold the multiple IDs. Then, of course, we have to store, we, we have to get these values from our environment variable. So what we are going to do is we will get the values from the environment variable if there are values set already. If it is not, then we'll initialize. So let's get the values from the environment that is pm dot environment dot then the get get is the kind of method which is used to get the values from your environment variable i already created variable name cust ids so i'll use that and this way we'll get the values from the cust ids environment variable to my local variable now it is not necessary that we have set values in the environment variable always. So we have to make sure if not, we have not set the values in the environment variable, we can set in our local variable by initializing it. So let's go ahead and initialize this variable. So how can we initialize? We'll be, in order to initialize, we can use the variable cust ID and then in order to initialize you use the rectangle brackets and then we can give the variable name such as cust 0 0 1 you can provide the second value such as you can give any value as per your need and let's go ahead and give the third value but we have we don't have to initialize this value always so what we can do is we'll check whether value is already present in that local variable if it is not then and then we are going to initialize in order to check that we have the if clause so what this if will check whether the cust id is present if it is present then we don't have to do the following initialization right so we have to check the negative operation here so this will check if the cust IDs are empty or they don't have the values or the other condition is we can check whether the cust ID which is another local variable and its length is less than one that means there is no value present then and then we are going to initialize this local variable that's pretty simple so once we initialize this variable, what we have to do is we have to pick one of the value. Suppose I want to pick the first value and then we can set that first value in the cust ID environment variable. How can we do that? It's very simple again. What we have to do, we have to create another variable which we can name as a current cust ID, something like that. Then in order to retrieve the very first value, we have to use cust id local variable and then use shift so what it will do it will just get that first value and cursor will move to the next line so that kind of runtime operation happens so we got the two values we got the customer ids all the values and we got our current values so 
So let's go ahead and set these two values in our environment variable. How to set that? Use the postman pm environment and then use the set. Once we have this, we have the environment actual variable name that is cust id and then we have to give the the value a uh, local variable value here. One more thing I forgot to mention at each executable end of the each execu executable statement we have to use semicomma. So let's go ahead and use that and we'll say the last environment variable that is cursed ids because what happened when the cursor moves to this next line we have to start from here so that in the next execution time it will pick the second value rather than it will start again from the zeros. So we are that's the reason we need to set it again in our environment variable and the environment na variable name is cust ids and let's set the cust ids which is a local variable and that's how the pre-request code is done. So the next thing is writing our test script because we wrote this but we have to execute this right in order to execute we have to write the code in the test script so what will happen is in the from the test script it will pick some values and will call the the actual post call and that post call will call internally body section and it will replace these values based on our pre-request initialized value because this is the first kind of get compiled uh, before execution so these values will be already populated and it will be used in the body and the endpoint will be called from the test so how can we call this endpoint before calling the endpoint we need to determine the what are the values present right if the values are not present then we are not going to call that's a very simple so in order to check whether values are present or not we'll use another kind of variable uh, let's name as a cust id so if the ids are present then and then only we are going to call the endpoint so let's uh, use the pm method which which can get the variables and of course you got it we have to use here cust ids which is again from the our environment variable and use colon semicomma and then we'll just check whether this id is present in this variable or not how to check we'll check if cust id is present and cust id length is greater than zero just to suffice that it do not hold any empty records and in this check if this satisfies then we'll call our endpoint how to call it it's very simple postman dot set next request this is the syntax for calling the request or the endpoint and here we don't have to do much we have to just copy this and paste it here and use semicomma now we have the values and we got the execution of this request what is then if the values are not present in the cursed ids so in that case we'll just write our else block and we'll tell the system that do nothing that is postman set next request equal to null or empty and that's it we wrote our body section we wrote our pre request section and we also done with our test script which will actually going to call the endpoint let's go ahead and execute this request by clicking send button we can see the status is 200 let's go ahead and see the body section we can see here the cust 001 this record got created and these are the kind of id generated for the the web service which we are calling let's send the next request 
Now, if you notice, I have not changed anything in the body section or in the environment variable, but the second record automatically got created with the second value which I have just initialized. Now, let me execute the third request and we'll see whether the last values get picked or not. And here we go. The last value cost 003 is also got picked and it created a completely new record. So this way we can conclude that we can use the prerequisite section and the test section to create multiple record using post request. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you have any questions or queries, you can definitely mention in the comment section of this video. Thank you.